Hi everybody, this is Brian David Marshall at Magic Weekend Paris. I'm here with Christian Calcano. Chris uh, just finished, is coming off a top 16 finish at Worlds. That's right. Uh, he's a Star City Games uh, Open Series winner. And uh, he's coming off a 7-3 record in standard here uh, at uh, Magic Weekend, which is really kind of one bad draft off of, you know, a standard deck that could have been in the top eight. Yeah. And one of the reasons I wanted to show people this deck is because... Uh, it's a deck that has, you know, blue mana in it. It doesn't have Jace the Mind Sculptor in it. And uh, it answers a question to a riddle. What's uh, black and blue and undead all over? Blue black vampires. <laughs> so uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the deck. Tell, tell us who you worked with on the deck. It, uh, was, uh, it was kind of an odd team of people from all around the world. Yeah, it was, it was me, Oivan Anderson from Norway, Sammy Hagvis from Finland, Mark Rocola from Finland, and... During like, the last week of testing, we added Jason Ford and Adam Yurchik, though he didn't end up playing the deck, but yeah. So it's a, it's a pretty like divergent, I guess you guys uh, all come together through like Magic Online and through various, I mean, you guys were obviously weren't all in the same place to play test. Yeah, like I actually met Oyvin while I was in Sweden for Grappy Koffenberg, and then he just messaged me a month before the Pro Tour, asked me about anyone test with, I said no, so. Right. Yeah, you, 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 in your magic career early on, you've been very willing to travel to Grand Prix. Yeah. And that sort of paid off in terms of networking with players all over the world, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So, all right, let's talk about the deck. So, I mean, it's got a pretty, you know, kind of basic vampire shell. We see our one-drop vampires. Tell us about Pulse Tracker. Uh, Pulse Tracker is just, just, you know, fast. He's one-drop, deals two damage. Kind of like a jackal pup kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, vampire Lacerator. You know, pretty pretty standard issue for these decks. Bloodgast also pretty standard issue. Uh, you know, so this, this thus far getting up to like the gatekeeper of Malakir here. Standard vampire deck. This is this is a standard vampire deck. So I'm fully expecting to see Mark of Mutinies, Mountains, <laughs> Lightning Bolts. But then we get to the, the sort of some of the newer cards. Phyrexian Revoker. You you said there were two decks that you were thinking about yeah. when you guys put this card in your deck. Yeah. After Worlds, the two most the two decks that were played the most were Valakut and Blue Black Control, and we knew that, so we wanted to play the Revoker because the Revoker is good against cards like Jace, and against Valakut it shuts down Expedition, which is really bad for them. So, so they they play Colony Heart Expedition, you play this, mm -hmm. and they can't sacrifice it and nope. basically start doing all the explosive things that that yeah. deck does in the early game. Yep. Now, one of the cards that's kind of missing here is Calastria Highborn. And you have a card that has the same casting cost, but doesn't even belong to the same tribe <laughs> as the rest of your vampires. What, why is Nantuko Shade in the deck? Uh, is in there because we just felt that Highborn was too like, mana intensive. Like, we didn't want to be forced to use the, our mana to like, make them lose to life uh, when we, like, on the spot. So we just played Nantuko Shade because he just helps us um, decide when we want to pump him or not and just hold mana back up for stuff like either playing extra guys or leaving mana up for counter spells and such. Right, so now you have, you have a whole package full of disruption here. You have uh, three duress, four inquisition. Yep. At first glance, I mean, early game, someone could even think you're a blue-black control deck. I, yeah, you played against one person. You didn't do much in game one, but you played like a creeping tar pit and a, you know, an Inquisition, and he's like, oh, I thought you were a blue-black control. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me about this card. Uh, Unified you, Will. You, yeah, what, what's up with Unified Will? Well, it's pro it's one of the better kind of spells in the format, uh, especially with this deck. People might think that we're playing Mana League, so they might play around Mana League a bit and just run right into the Unified Will. Since our creatures are so cheap, most against most decks in the format, we're always going to have more creatures in them. Right, so you have like 23 creatures in the deck. Mm -hmm. Not, not, and, and you can also get sometimes sneak an extra creature in with like a creeping tar pit. Yeah. So, uh, go for the throat. Uh, this is the sort of big removal spell Double that format, yeah. has, you, even, even when it's not actively doing something, it's really changed the way people have built their decks. Yeah, definitely. Um, like, coming to this weekend, like, I saw so many people playing artifact decks. Like, you saw um, Martin Juice's deck with the like, cutoff of Forest Masters and stuff, and then. It was V's Moshewitz deck, uh, just aggro artifact creatures like Glenhawk Idol, Mem Knight, stuff like that. So it, this replaced Lightning Bolt in a lot of decks, and it opened up a lot of possibilities for people to play different cards than they might normally. And yeah. I, I, I thought it was a pretty interesting card. So 
four fetch lands. You said maybe you, you would consider going up to yeah. a couple more for the just, just for, for the, the blood, blood guests. But the deck only plays twenty three lands, so uh, I'm kind of fine with the mana base. Kind of happy with it. We got you know the full set of twelve blue black lands. Creeping Tarpet, also not a vampire, but you know very good yeah. at killing people. Very good at killing Jace. Dragon Catacombs. And then uh, we got seven swamps. Yep. And uh, let's talk a little bit about sideboard. Now, I, after sideboard, you have like kind of a, a different package. I, I saw you at least one match coming in <coughs> and bringing in this set of cards and going to like a much more bigger kind of control deck. That's right. T so tell me like a situation where you would do that. Well, against a deck like Boros, I just uh, I'd bring in like the two tech edges to go up to 25 lands. And I bring in the worm curl engines, the skin renders. Um, I also have um, a fourth go for the throat. A couple of disfigures. Oh, so you, you're you're yeah. going to bring in a, a uh, lot of yeah, cards. Yeah, I bring I bring a lot of cards. So if you're playing against this is like an aggro Boros deck or maybe a called off a red deck or yeah, like after after game two after game one against those decks, we kind of turn into a blue black control deck ourselves. So okay. Yeah. And so what what do you take out to make room for all of this? You're taking um, out like pulse trackers and... I, I guess the aggro decks, I take out like, the unify wheels because they're not as good. Because they're just swarming with creatures. Um, like, I guess the Boros deck. I take out the wheels, I take out the rest. And I take out... Sorry, what's the other card? Yeah, I take out uh, the revokers because they're not very good against them. Sure. And like one or two pulse trackers. All right, well, let's look through the rest of the sideboard here. You got uh, two marsh casualties. Yeah, that, that card was really good, especially against Cadolfa Red. Yeah. You know, stops you from getting blown out by a turn one rebirth. Okay, so you can just play it on turn two and just kill, kill all three guys. of their guys. Yeah. And uh, obvious card here is Flash Freeze. Yeah. And then finally, uh, Dark Tutelage. What, what are you bringing Dark Tutelage in against? Uh, against blue black control and blue white control. Just against the control decks. So, and, and how, do you, how do you sideboard something like that? I mean, I assume you're still leaving in your creatures, but maybe you're yeah. taking out like gatekeepers. Yeah. Or? Well, against control, like, all I do is. Um, I side like I get this blue black control. I side out my go for the throats in a swamp, and I bring in two tutelage and two tech edges. Because tech edges is really good against them, obviously. And yeah, against a blue white though, blue white might be a little different. Like I'd probably side out the gatekeepers because they're not really that good against them. Sure. Especially you know if they have leyline, then it just shuts him down. Right. Leyline, you said, is a real problem for this deck actually, because you yeah. see like right here, you see this package of like seven discard spells and. Yeah. It can get, it can be a little uh, if they yeah. if they have an early ley line you're blue black there's not a lot you can do about a an enchantment yeah if they have a turn zero ley line it it probably be really hard for us to win especially you know because all the resses and inquisitions are just dead cards but it's not that bad it also it also shuts down gatekeeper of Malakir, right yeah that too so yeah. So Okay, well, you have a Grand Prix to play in tomorrow. That's right. I know you are. I know you're hoping to have other plans for for this week, for the rest of this weekend. But uh, still, a very solid showing in standard here, seven to three. A deck you might want to look at for Friday Night Magic. Certainly, uh, certainly something different. Uh, people aren't going to expect it. Mm -hmm. uh, for Christian Calcano, this is Brian David Marshall signing off for Magic Weekend. <laughs>